let us now turn our attention to geographic diversification. During the last 100 years or so, there has been a tremendous increase in trade, exports and imports, as well as foreign direct investment where a firm from one country makes an investment in another country. In the very recent past, there has been a slowdown in globalization. We will have to wait and see if this lull is a temporary phenomenon or a long-term trend. Nevertheless, global firms play a dominant role in many parts of the world and in many industries. There are many, many issues that are involved in the management of global firms. Here, we will focus only on the benefits and costs of geographic diversification. Let us discuss the costs first. When a firm diversifies into a new country, it faces liability of foreignness. In many countries, including those that are developed, foreign firms are discriminated against in terms of government policies, either directly or in subtle ways. In addition, there are significant differences between countries in terms of language, culture, norms, and institutional practices. For example, an American firm may find it difficult to understand how the court system in India works. The American norms of hire and fire are different from the Japanese norms of lifetime employment. Because of all these differences, firms face significant costs when they cross national borders. In addition, the costs of excessive diversification that we already discussed apply in the case of geographic diversification as well. To look at the benefits, one can use the same corporate advantage test since geographic diversification is another form of diversification. If VA is the value that a firm obtains by operating in country A, VB is the value that the firm obtains by operating in country B, and VAB is the value that a firm obtains by operating in both countries. Geographic diversification is justified when VAB is greater than VA plus VB. Thus, the additional revenues that a firm obtains by operating in another country is not a sufficient justification for geographic diversification, especially because a firm incurs additional costs when it is geographically diversified. The above test implies that only when a firm that is present in multiple countries has an advantage over a firm that is in only a single country, geographic diversification is justified. For example, what advantage does a coffee house company that is present in multiple countries have over a coffee house company that is located in only one country? We discussed earlier that product diversification can benefit a firm since a firm can share activities, resources, and capabilities across multiple products. The same benefits exist in the case of geographic diversification as well. For example, a global coffee house chain can share its brand and marketing capabilities across different countries. It can thus incur a lower expenditure on developing these resources and capabilities compared to a company that is not geographically diversified. In addition to these benefits, geographic diversification is also justified when a company is able to undertake an activity at a much lower cost in another country. For example, many shoe companies assemble shoes in countries where the wages are low. To summarize, geographic diversification also has to satisfy the logic of corporate advantage. That is, geographic diversification is justified when a firm that is present in multiple countries has advantages compared to a firm that is in only a single country. There are many benefits of geographic diversification, the most prominent one being the sharing, leveraging, and transfer of resources and capabilities. The costs of geographic diversification may also be high due to the differences that exist between countries. Thus, firms should be cautious when engaging in geographic diversification.